Howdy y'all, my name is Michael and I am the Dead Aussie Gamer here to share with you my tips, tricks and mental percolations about playing and running tabletop role playing games. Now, pretty soon I'll be playing a character called Flint in an upcoming series called The Broken World Chronicles. Flint is an ironborn gunslinger and took me a little bit to learn how to portray him as a character. So I'll be doing this video about how it is I came upon that process and some of the exercises that you can use to portray your very own character. If you want to check out Flint in action, then be sure to head on over to twitch.tv slash greatgm Monday at 6 p.m. PST. Without any further ado, let's get into the video and learn a thing or two, shall we? Alright guys, so, uh, welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, my name is Michael and I am the Dead Aussie Gamer. And uh, yeah, many of you know that I am very Australian. Therefore, doing an American accent was um, and is quite a challenge for me because it is so drastically different to my own accent. Uh, there are some things that I uh, practiced and learnt that I'm going to share with you guys and I highly recommend if you've got time, like if you're in the shower, if you're in uh, on the toilet, if you're on the train, you know, just start randomly talking to people in a different accent. Um, yeah, it's a great way to practice your voice and um, learn how to characterize yourself in different ways so uh first and for first of all let me tell you a little bit about flint uh flint is a ironborn uh gunslinger from a wild west world where everything is kind of in a dystopian sort of state uh, i won't go too much into too much detail but needless to say he is a rather hard-edged individual very stoic very stern and to portray his character there were just so many different layers to the accent i needed to use that, um, that it actually took me like the better part of, I think, a month before I got an accent to a point where I was happy with. So the first thing I wanted was I wanted a cowboy voice. To make a cowboy voice, I went straight to where, you know, the cowboy voices are often seen. And that is, of course, Texas, the Wild West, Austin, Texas. And uh, the first thing I did was I started playing a heck of a lot of Red Dead Redemption and watching a whole bunch of movies and uh, spaghetti westerns and the first thing i learned was when you want to use uh particularly an american wild west accent you want to have kind of like the path for your air be the top of your mouth and out your nose if you can do both then fantastic but if you can't then top of the mouth is where you want to go as you round out all the vowels and make sure that they sound real nice you want to make sure that your inflections always hit straight either in the center of your accent or at the end of your accent well sentence sorry i can't quite rightly remember what word is what but then again that kind of works for the texan accent if you don't know what word no mean don't make no don't matter none if you can't speak no proper english as long as you can kind of put the sentence together i'm sure someone understand you this being said though uh it is actually quite a convoluted accent when you start to add in a couple of the different words that just make it sound a little bit more cowboy and less Texan. So, uh, to begin, the word reckon, fella, um, and mighty are great examples of words that, that just appear everywhere. I reckon that fella's up to no good. I got a mighty urge to ventilate his skull with some lead should he come cause trouble here. Now, um, as you can hear from those accent, the, those particular voices, reckon, uh, you know, like reckon, like with a U-N at the end, or mighty, M-A-I-T, might, might, you know what, I just might. Uh, and then filler is uh, instead of fella, which is F-L-F-E-L-L-A, F-F-E-L-L-E-R, filler. So uh, if you have an A, like um, sarsaparilla, you would say, instead of sarsaparilla, you would say, sarsaparilla. And, uh, those kind of, uh, little inflections will, and changes in your dialogue will really help round out that, that kind of harsh southern accent. That was where I started, mind you. And, um, once I got to that point where I've got the, the Texan accent reasonably well, well versed, I then took it and I ran it into where I where where could I make it sound like I was an ironborn? Where could I make it sound like I was a warforged? Now the warforged, uh, which you can see behind me, 
are uh, a voice which is very stoic, very stern, and not very emotional because these guys don't really have the need for those inflections. While they can feel emotions and sound like everyone else, there has to be some sort of difference that makes them unique. So I took the, the typical Texan accent and I decided to lower it down a bit. Now the lower down that I made it, the easier it was for me to sound a bit more monotone. As it sounds monotone, deeper, makes it sound like everything I have to say is said with clear and precise intention. One can suggest that this voice comes from a voice of authority, of certainty, and of clarity. One might find in a warforge, for example. But that's not all the place that I stopped. While the English may not be great, the tone might be right on cue, I found that a lot of cowboys tend to use a lot of metaphors. These metaphors would basically shape how they'd speak and interact with people, making something that would sound mundane sound rather intimidating. For example, Now see here, you. You stare at me like that again. I'm going to punch you in the face. Now see here, fella. You eyeball me like that again, and I'll introduce you to some percussive maintenance. Little voices like that, little phrases that you can find, they are the ones that make him identify as a machine. Percussive maintenance is obviously beating something till it works. Uh, you could use that to, to describe getting into a fight. Yeah, old Jenkins boys were down over by the barn performing some percussive maintenance. There could be other phrases that you could use in order to try and communicate the same thing. Listen here, I ain't fresh off the assembly line. I got more than my fair share of mud on my tracks. Now, of course, Ironborn or Warforge don't have no tracks, but don't mean that the accent plus the phrase don't make sense. It's very easy to understand that getting mud in your tracks means you've got a bit of experience under your boot, that you've been through the miles and been through the slop. Even exclamations like, Pump my pistons! Or... Great Gyro's Ghost. These kind of phrases really kind of stand out and make it seem like you are, in fact, some kind of robotic, ironborn type fellow. All right. So, uh, yeah, from there, um, the trickiest part of the accent, uh, apart from obviously learning the Texan drawl, which, as mentioned, is coming up through the back of the mouth and uh, between the nose and the upper, upper jaw, I, just there. Uh, and of course, uh, learning those little inflections and those key phrases, and then of course making my own phrases, the final step to getting Flint just right was figuring out the pace. Um, as a performer, I am accustomed to playing very high energy, very rapidly, you know, excitable people. So when I started to play Flint, who's supposed to be rather stoic, the first thing I needed to learn is how to slow down what I was saying. If I started to speak really fast and started talking at my normal speed, this just starts to sound a bit silly and makes it sound like Flint actually has no idea what he's trying to do and is trying to just talk as quickly as he can. But that's just how I roll. It's not exactly how I'd imagine a cowboy to roll, nor would I expect Flint to roll this way and eventually I'd blah, 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 right? That's, yeah, it's just not how, how I imagined him doing it. So the first thing I learned was the use of the dramatic pause. As soon as you do it, people understand you're serious. Let me give you an example. What is it you said to me? I'm sorry. I didn't catch that. You want to repeat that one more time with your big boy voice? Now, that creates that sense of intimidation. That creates that sense of, um, of stoic, you know, kind of creepiness that I really want to portray in Flint. Now, um... Flint was very tricky because, for me, um, he was designed to be a serious character, and in how he was being serious, that's where people were going to, you know, enjoy him and love him. Things like the machine quotes, things like the, um, you know, kind of being intimidating and using metaphors to kind of scare people. See here, you keep talking like that again. I'm going to introduce your skull to some fresh air. You dig? 
Okay, that was wrong, but you know, you get my meaning. Having the phrase, having like a really cool and funny intimidating phrase made for a really, really cool and awesome interaction with this guy, even though it wasn't him being silly or him being, you know, kind of wacky or zany. It's going to be a character that is definitely going to challenge me as a performer, and I look forward to and relish the opportunity to do so. So without any further ado, thank you so much for joining us. I hope this video helped you guys um, at least understand a little bit about my personal process. Um, the last little thing I'll actually give as a hint to how I practice when I do my voices, I practice in the shower, but understand that the shower is not going to be an accurate representation to how you sound elsewhere. Showers actually have great acoustics because of its enclosed space. The resonance from the shower and the walls create an awesome sound, so that's why you sound better when you sing or you perform accents in your shower. If you do practice, practice in your game space as well. That way you can understand exactly what you're going to sound like when you get to it. Super important and uh, definitely recommend it. Uh, all right, so without any further ado, thank you very much for joining us. Please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Go check us out in all of the links. And of course, be sure to tune in to the Broken World Chronicles on twitch.tv slash greatgm, Monday, 6 p.m. PST. Uh, until next time, guys, as always, from the Dead Aussie Gamer, game hard or die trying. Have a good one.